Hello friends, I am Ardhin Dude and you are watching Edis English Literature. Here in this video lecture, we are reading such a beautiful poem which was written in the intermingling years of World Wars. We are reading this after 80 and 90 years. A man has tried all his resources to fulfill the expectations of a good citizen that the state demands. By that process, he has lost his identity his individuality and has become an unknown citizen. Today we are going to discuss and analyze W. H. Auden's beautiful poem The Unknown Citizen. We will read the significance of the title word that's the unknown citizen. Simply we will try to know why did W. H. Auden write the unknown citizen with that sort of title why does he want to talk about a citizen who is truly unknown technically there are hardly any metaphors and similes or any other rhetorical flourishes so this typical poem is written in free parts which is quite akin to t.s Eliot's writing of other sort of poems we will venture to that category later, but first W. H. Auden as the poet. W. H. Auden was an Anglo-American poet, playwright and literary critic. Regarded by many as the most influential poet in English since T. S. Eliot. In 1925, he entered Christ Church College and uh, it was within the University of Oxford where he became the center of a group of literary intellectuals that included Stephen Plender, Christopher Isarhood, C. J. Lewis and Louis Magnus. In 1939, Auden moved to the United States where he became a citizen and was active as a poet, a reviewer, lecturer and editor. We have several notable poems by his name that may include The Double Man, For the Time Being, The Age of Anxiety, Collected Poetry, The Shield of Achilles, Collected Longer Poems. These are all the collections of his excellent writing, excellent poetry. If you have the time, you can venture in his, in his writing and his writing style. Like T.S. Eliot, you know, uh, Auden is a representative poet and he represents a kind of a, a dreadful picture of a modern spiritual ice age in his poetry. Like him, he finds a cool, ironic wit. It was deeply religious. That's the notable point we can uh, have a deviation from T.S. Eliot's poetry. There is a religious undertone in his poetry. Auden was concerned to a greater degree than Eliot, however, uh, with special and social problems is the pivotal point in his writing. Possessed by uh, or possessed of proving psychological insight, Auden also had a supremely lyrical gift. Even though many of his poems are written in free verse, audience influence on the succeeding generation of poets was immense in the type of writing the poetry as well as in type of mastering his words. His intellectual rigor, social conscience, combined with his fluid mix of styles and expert craftsmanship, these are all of audience poetry. And in modern poetry, in modern poetics, his writing is always recognized in a great scale. Using the desolate and rocky background of the post-war Europe of 1930s, um, Auden delineates in his poetry the sociological, the political corruption and of the decayed and mechanized existence of man in an industrial city life, modern city life. So the pivotal point and pivotal discussion 
in his poetry is modern man his poetry is also noted for its stylistic and technical achievements its engagement with the poetics morals laws religion however his real subject is man and his day to day activity and nature is merely the setting for that activity so we cannot find out the descriptive natural scenarios his first he first locates human elements and then produces a terse comments on it so that's the kind of a uh, poetic jar we can find out in ordens poetry now look at this poem the title word the unknown citizen and a dedication or a subtitle to a particular number what does it suggest irony irony on the set principles of society mechanical material and drab now who is this unknown citizen the answer is every man like ts eliot's proof of or the modern man of preludes the unknown citizen is a modern man crossed under the system the state system and bureaucracy this particular poem the unknown citizen was written in 1939 shortly after orden moved from england to the united states that i have already stated you the poem was first published on january 6 1940 in the new yorker and the first and it first appeared in book form in ordens collection another time it is a satirical lyric that presents an ironic picture of a model citizen in a modern urban industrial society now coming to the title once again the title word the unknown citizen is the average man now he is the central topic of this poem now this entire poem is written in a flat matter of fact tone a kind of a reporting we learn that nobody knows his name rather he is known by only say his social security number that has been written to js 07m378 now he is truly an unknown citizen to obliterate any hint of his individual identity he does not have an address that anchors him to a special locality to a particular locality there is total regimentation in modern industrial society in mingling years of the words the industrial society in which a man is reduced to a mere number his social identity or the psyche of a human being is lost he loses all individuality and simply conforms to a pattern any violation of which is regarded as eccentricity before we start reading the poem look at this diagram it displays the summary of the stat records of the unknown citizen i have compiled it after reading this poem it will readily summarize the contents of the text it might be like this kind of card an official record you can have by these lines um, that somebody is sitting at the desk and reading the stats of that unknown citizen now he was found by the bureau of statistics to be one against whom there was no official complaint and all the reports of his conduct agree that in the modern sense of an old fashioned word he was a saint for in everything he did he served the greater community when we start reading the poem what strikes us is who is reading the tales of an unknown citizen in such an insipid way i can say it is an insipid way because there is no emotion only but stats is being delivered here a fictional bureaucrat pops up in our mind a babu bureaucrat sitting on a happy chair in a art or comfort makes a measurement of an individual in some stats statistics 
he is figuring out who this numbered person is but he is not interested in any of the emotions now who is this bureaucrat he is an agent of the state how dare he sum up a man's life by some stats collected by some state agencies criticism must be earned by such attitude and that has been shown in this poem the very first line of the poem tracks us to the bureau of the statistics and its finding what has the bureau of statistics found about this unknown citizen his conduct was excellent and there had been no official complaint there is no complaint ha have ever been registered on this person in a modern sense of an old fashioned word he was a saint that the poet says now who is called a saint a man who has sacrificed his life for the sake of society so what is the modern meaning of the word saint according to the poet orden it might be said that this unknown citizen might have sacrificed his identity for the sake of community the unknown citizen has sacrificed everything every part and parcels of his individuality of his emotions to listen to the dictates of the state for the greater cause of social tranquility social peace or so called governmental ideologies except for the war till the day he retired he worked in a factory and never got fired but satisfied his employers fudge motors inc yet he was not a scab or odd in his views for his union reports that he paid his dues our report on his union shows it was sound and our social psychology workers found that he was popular with his mates like to dream this poem you must know this poem right through it appears is attacking the concept of human being who is not much more than the product of all the economical commercial and ideological pressure groups which force him to conform to a standard pattern of life and thought the unknown citizen is an obedient worker at fudge motors inc it says he has union membership and does not work against the wishes of his employers so there is a word called scab so there is no back leg he never refused to join his fellow in a strike so he conformed the all the rules any personal variations are immediately spotted by the social psychology workers or other bureaucratic correlative mechanisms of the government and no such reports has been lodged against him so the person unknown citizen is with the comply of government rules dictates dictums and he is a person as like that of a module set by government the press are convinced that he brought a paper every day and that his reactions to advertisements were normal in every way policies taken out in his name prove that he was fully insured and his health card shows he was once in hospital but left it cured both producers research and high grade living declared he was fully sensible to the advantages of installment plan and had everything necessary 
to the modern man. A phonograph, a radio, a car, a frigidaire. So the modern man is in touch with all the reports and news published in the newspaper. So he was an avid reader and a follower of government news. All this imposes a uniformity in his behavior and activities which seem to be dull and monotonous in our eyes in poets observation but it is very satisfying to the government agents, the bureaucrats who is observing it. The farm likes producers, research and high grade living declares that the man was fully sensible to the advantages of the installment plans. Here, poet Auden satirizes the commercial process of the exploitation which almost destroys a modern man. The man and his earning and his device of spending is all said by government or the commercial institutes. He owns a car, a phonograph, a radio, a fridia and maintains installment plans. The farms carry out investigations to find out the likes and dislikes of the consumers to promote the sales of their goods like car, uh, like phonograph. Here phonograph simply means uh, for gramophone. It's the American word. So here the commercial attitude or consumer attitude is being protested. What in protest against the society which manipulates man by the laws of mass organization, commercial exploitation, social research and spying system. These are all doing or all started at that period. This kind of criticism of the killing of individuals freedom and happiness came and still comes from very different viewpoints. Now the world is changing but with the changing world the mechanism is changing but the attitudes of the government towards their citizen is still the same and that's the leftist view of the order. Stop it. Our researchers into public opinion are content that he held the proper opinions for the time of year. When there was peace, he was for peace. When there was war, he went. He was married and added five children to the population. Which our eugenist says was the right number for a parent of his generation. And our teachers report that he never interfered with their education. This entire poem you have already understood shows how the average person is praised into the conformism by some evil social forces. Here the evil social forces are all chaired by government or government mechanism. Of course there is a often antagonism and conflict between these social forces. Apart from the obvious conflict of the labor and capital, there are the population problem. As indicated by the high grade living and the proper size of the family suggested by the eugenist. Now who the eugenist? Eugenist are the expert on race improvement. You know, eugenists worldwide believe that they could perfect human beings and eliminate so-called weaker section or social yields through genetics, through heredity. They believed the use of methods such as involuntary sterilization, segregation and social exclusion would rid society of the individuals deemed by them to be unfit. So, government agencies are also they and they have said what should be the number size of the family and this person this unknown citizen has made five children added five children to the population half into the society that's perfect 
so what ordained means to say is that modern man has lost his identity in this society by the pressure of the government they are turned into mere numbers where the identification mark is not the personality and all such organizations research organization public opinions everything is all said to make the person lose his identity and become a a a kind of a copycat of the government agencies was he free was he happy the question is absurd had anything been wrong we should certainly have heard the inlines of this particular poem are so pungent and critical despite leading a life of governmental norms is the individual happy is the unknown citizen happy free it is very hard eating ironical a remark you know impliedly the poet answers it the unknown citizen was not happy the question tag proves it rather it was the state machinery that throttled the free wills and free thoughts of the unknown citizen the state control of the citizen the state control on the citizen is poisonous and vicious and it destroys the free living it destroys the free will it destroys the free thought the novels of dh lawrence expose the effect of modern society on man's emotional life oren was very much influenced by dh lawrence again orwell's 1984 or adlas huxley's a brave new world criticizes the state who pretends to be all knowing except for the things that really matter so the government takes the banter government takes the satire government takes the irony here in this poem we all know that orden has been a left wing thinker that makes bitter attack not on mass organization of society but on the capitalist exploitation of that society in some lines of the poem he shows his divergences from the left wing analysis though but how the kind of trade union and the problems with the employer such type of problems when it says he worked in a factory and never got fired yet he was not a scab or odd in his views from his union reports that he paid his dues though some critics are of the opinion that as in the post 1918 period the possibility of a satisfactory trade unionist or a happy collaboration of the capital and labor is fabulous orden's view is false they state a question how did an unknown citizen manage to avoid the repercussion of the general strike of 1926 the historical things that or the economical crisis of the 30s when 3 and 3 quarter millions in britain were unemployed by 1932 so the whole of the historical facts or the economic facts is not being shared by orden the three dangers in fact that orden mentions in this poem are true are anonymity conformity and the threat control over the individual that's the three themes that still running in present days the man has to really fight these three forces in order to retain his happiness and his individuality that's the problem and that the problem which orden wants to strike at of course the poem can still serve as a warning against the social pressure of our mass society using the style of rill the austrian poet who wrote in germany he were uses the contemporary social landscape and geography as symbolic of human condition 
and the human psyche. Odin, whose topography is always political, economical or psychological, particularly in this poem, uses all his tools in a satirical way, in a Swiftian model. But somewhere, somehow, we can find out in audience this particular poem a pathetic figure of a modern man who stands alone suffering in the hands of government, in the hands of government machinery, in the hands of false ideologies or false dictum of the government that one government can control every citizen by their principles, by their set outlooks, by their set ideologies. That's the false category of leading a life or organizing a country. So these are the point of view that Auden has shared in this particular poem. Now you can read this poem once again. You can have the whole, in the whole poem a kind of a free verse where more of the rhyming patterns are occasionally rhymed but not totally. Uh, sometimes you can have the rhyming pattern uh, like the alternative verse that's in the first line to the third line into the second to the into the fourth but such uh, again um, coupled rhymes are also again but in thought in general the words and its arrangement apart from the in rhymes sometimes in the lines the total of the poem can be told as a free verse where uh, the sounds and the flow or the thought content of the poem swiftly uh, flows into the sweet uh, striking words uh, with heavy pungent words uh, with the name of agencies now the name of the agencies when it is uttered like that of a hammer it is striking in our head and that's the very purpose of ordens this beautiful uh, poetic excellence of this particular poem. If there is any problem in reading or understanding this particular poem, just ask me, I will share my knowledge to you. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned to this kind of posts or the likes. Thank you. Bye-bye.